here today about front brake master cylinders and front clutch master cylinders on modern trials bikes. And probably the most common problem that people have with their trials bikes that, relate, that relates to this. Um, there's a few different types of master cylinders on modern bikes and I'll go through those first before we talk about the most common problem I find on the workshop here. Um, on beaters you'll find the Gramica master cylinder. Um, this one is easily identified by the sloping cap on the reservoir here. Um, it works exactly the same as the AJP and Brake Tech ones do. Uses exactly the same size ball. It's a 9.5 millimeter ball that you'll find across the, the gamut on everything. Um, screws onto the handlebars using two screws at the back here. Very similar in the fact that it's got the same adjustments. It's got an adjustment here for lever position and it's got an adjustment here for the free play adjuster on that actuates the piston. Um, yeah, you'll only find those on beaters. Um, every other brand uses um, AJP slash Brake Tech. AJP was a company in Spain that made master cylinders for virtually all brands um, up until they came into some financial problems around 2011, 2012. Um, for a short period of there, there was a real shortage of master cylinders and a few companies like Gas Gas and Sherco went to formula. I don't have a formula one here to show you. Um, I'll try and get a picture of one and put it on the, on the um, video. Um, and then quickly they um, found that a company called Brake Tech which is owned by Juan, uh, it's a J1, it's a brake company in Spain that has recently been bought out by Brembo. Um, they bought all the toolings from AJP and started to continue the AJP products. So you'll find on lots of trials bikes right through from the 80s, they use AJP brand master cylinders like this that are really easily identified by this rectangular reservoir cap on both the um, clutch and brake master cylinders. Um, sometimes there was a smaller cap, sometimes a larger one. And, uh, uh, sorry, when AJP went under and Brake Tech took over, they started reproducing exactly the same master cylinders. And then they updated the product and started to use their own proprietary design. Um, the Brake Tech ones can easily be identified by this trapezium shape of the cap on the brake and clutch master cylinders. Um, there's a few variations which I'll go through, uh, but this is the current sort of state of the art uh, master cylinder that's used by virtually every brand except Beta. Um, so you'll find this on lots of bikes. Sometimes they have an anodized cap, so I might have a silver or a red cap and a silver or a red perch, or just these plain black ones, which are the standard um, with AJP master cylinders. Um, brake side usually always had the big reservoir cap. Um, clutches used a variety. Some some used a small one on a brake, but not many. I think the Osa had a small one. But you can see that's the small reservoir size. That's the large reservoir size. Um, so that was some variation. You also found that um, on the clutch master cylinders there was a dot four variation and a mineral variation. Um, a few of the manufacturers starting with gas gas used mineral oil in their clutches because the clutch slave was inside the um, gearbox clutch area and if there was a slave failure that dot four if there was a failure could get into the gearbox internals and do some damage to seals and things so they started using they first started with a dot four in 2003 but they quickly changed to a mineral oil um, and that's denoted by a green cap and a light coloured internal reservoir seal. So you'll see on the dot four versions, they've always got a black seal. Um, on the mineral oil versions, they've always got that light coloured seal, either that green colour, like I showed you then, or a light grey. Um, on the later model brake techs, this one. With the brake, with the AJPs, um, same. Majority of them 9.5 mil bore. Some of the kids' bikes, like on this one off a of Boy 50, use a 12.5 mil ball but it's really rare you can pretty much say across the board that everyone uses 9.5 millimeter bores um, there is some variation as well the early AJPs or right through the AJPs used a master cylinder 
piston shaped like this. This is the hydraulic seal that does all the work. This is the seal that seals to the outside. Sometimes this was an O-ring, sometimes on later models like this, it's a lip seal. Um, and then after Brake Tech took over on their version one master cylinders, which are the ones with um, the two screw perch holder, um, they use the same size uh, piston. And then when they went to the version two and version three, um, they used a different piston and the distance between these two points here was different. So you can't swap them. So this is a version two piston. This one here is almost the same. It's a version three piston. It has different fluting here for lubricating the piston as it slides along the bore. So this lubricates more efficiently and keeps the wear less. Um, so a version two and version three can be interchanged because they're the same distance here to here and the same diameter, but you can't change those with a version one. A version one is shorter from this point to this point. Um, we'll explain the internals and the and the portholes um, as we come to it now. Uh, one of the things I find that is the most common problem with trials bikes is just the setup. People, heaps of people have problems with clutch take up, with clutches slipping, with clutches dragging. They're constantly looking for the problem at the clutch when in fact it's here at the master cylinder. And what they're doing is not allowing the piston that's in here to come all the way back. This piston is has an internal spring in it like this. It fits into this piston bore. The fluid has to be able to travel from the clutch or the brakes along this line. And when there's no pressure on the lever, it needs to be able to make its way up into the reservoir. Because as you're applying brake and that fluid heats up at the caliper, obviously this heat being generated from the friction, that fluid will expand a little and it needs to be able to get up and that excess get up into the reservoir. If it can't get up into the reservoir because you've got too much pressure applied here on the piston, the only thing it can do is squeeze those pucks together to give itself more room to expand and drag your brakes. And as you drag your brakes, you generate more heat. More heat, it can't get back into the reservoir. You get brake lock. Same with clutches. You've got to have it so on these master cylinders, you have to have that little tiny bit of free play, that loose play there, that lets the piston come all the way back along the ball and allows for free movement of the fluid between the reservoir and the hydraulic line. That is the biggest problem we find with trials bike setup. So many people come in with issues and that is the common cause. Either that or these seals are worn and we're getting bypass. This seal is very, very fine on its edge, so it's made to flare. As that pushes against the fluid, this seal flares out and seals against the edge of the piston and creates good hydraulic pressure. It's pushing that fluid all the way down. It works like a solid bar. If you haven't got air in there, there is no movement. You move a mill here, it moves a mill down there. So if you've got a damaged seal, if there's little nicks in this seal or the edges are worn, you might be pushing that fluid. 70% of it's going down the line, 30% of it's bypassing that seal and going back up into the reservoir. So you've got problems. So the, the real trick to, to clutch problems and brake problems is really making sure your master cylinder is working properly and efficiently from, from the get-go. Um, here, and we'll I find a few little Guitar strings of varying sizes are fantastic for cleaning out pilot jets and little holes in the master cylinders and stuff. But there's two holes there. You'll see one is to allow fluid to pass between the reservoir and the hose and the line. So that's the fluid that we were just talking about. The other hose, the other hole there allows a bit of fluid into this area of the master cylinder piston. So it lubricates the piston. This little seal here stops that fluid going to the outside, but allows the smooth movement of this 
piston along the ball. So we've got to make sure those two holes are really clean. Um, and we've got to have that free play on the actuating pin. Um, that actuating pin, like that, is pushing on your piston. But that piston's got to be able to come back all the way so that little hole there is clear. As soon as you apply any pressure at all, that little seal covers up the hole and the fluid can't get through. Biggest problem. Just an example here, you've seen I've taken the free play out, so there's pressure already on the piston. When I pull that lever in, there's no bubbles, because that fluid can't transfer. Now here I've wound some free play on, see it's loose, pull that lever, bubbles coming up straight away, so we can clear any air out of the system. Biggest problem. Sort that out, and it'll sort out half people's problems with clutches. Anyway. Hope that helps a little bit. Hopes that helps you understand a little bit of how the master cylinders work. Um, pretty simple. Um, any problems, you can always email me or message me on Facebook. I'm happy to talk about it. Anyway, until the next one, talk to you soon.